Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really want you guys to bear with me because I'm already feeling the sun conjunct Uranus aspect that's going on this week. We'll talk about that in a second, but really it has my ruffled, like my feathers ruffled, and I am feeling very stubborn. I'm feeling very like pushed back a little bit and meaning like, this is my boundary, don't cross it, you know? And that's kind of what's happening this morning. It is what it is. My regular 22 minutes of meditation is not is not cutting it today. <laughs> it's not cutting it because, you know, my, my, my buttons are gonna push. It is what it is. I am wondering if you guys are feeling this and I want you guys to let me know when, you, if, if you do feel it, because I don't want to speak it into existence if it's not something that is, is that you're experiencing right now. Also, that being said, this is probably not going to be my best video because, again, I'm on another level right now. Who knows how that's going to turn out. I just am channeling it and focusing it for good versus allowing myself to kind of get, you know, uh, derailed by it is the word that I'll use. So there are a lot of changes that are happening this week, some that have already happened that we are feeling and experiencing now, some that are happening at this current moment in time, and some that will happen. But all of this is kind of uh, pushed up after this past weekend. Now, the major thing that I'm seeing that I want to talk about, that I want to start off with, is the fact that sun representing our egos and when I say egos the internet sometimes likes to come for me and they'll be like okay Jess well you know what do you mean by ego like we're not egocentric no it's your sense of identity it's your sense of self your how you understand yourself to be is what I mean when I say the word ego so your son representing our egos our energy as a collective just moved into the sign of Taurus all well and good <laughs> and would be really good because Taurus is very grounded. It's very slow and steady. It's very methodical It's all about reaping the wards. It's all about slowing down It's all about you know kind of getting your hands into the dirt of things and Feeling the abundance of that and pulling the abundance from that and biting into the abundance of that It's very decadent. It's a very intentional sign and we are again under that influence There's some things that where we were normally stubborn with and we're normally rigid with, there's two ways that I see this manifesting. You are either going to step into a space where you are implementing stronger boundaries for yourself, especially with Pluto going retrograde. We'll talk about that in a minute. You're either, you're going to have these firmer boundaries for yourself. And okay, this is where the line doesn't, you know, this is where you don't cross the line. The, the other aspect of that is you being very protective of others and you doing whatever it is that you need to do in order to create stability for yourself, in order to protect what's important for you, what's important to you, or what you thought was important or what you thought was valuable or this way that you're living your life is really starting to get tested and that's another reason why your feathers are being ruffled now me personally it's a boundary thing I like to take my time and I'm reevaluating my 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 time constraints I'm real reevaluating what is important as far as what needs my full attention what isn't and if anybody comes in and pushes on that and is like like chipping at it it's like look this isn't about you this is about what I need to do, and if you want this, you have to wait. You have to wait your turn. So that's kind of the vibe that I'm in today. But really, it's so interesting because Sun conjunct Uranus today, on, or at least Monday 22nd, and we're going to be feeling this for the majority of the week. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Sun conjunct Uranus creates this energy of you need to back off. Like, you need to back off. You know, you're coming across really abrasive. You... It's not, for some of you guys, you're like, it's my way or the highway. You either doing this or you're not. It's almost like giving an ultimatum. And that, even me saying that out loud, makes a lot of sense for this past weekend for me personally. But it's nothing personal, but it's just like, look, this way that we've done it, this way that we've grounded this, this, this way that we've built this foundation, is it something that's firm and lasting and something to build upon? And whatever it is that we're building, what is it? What is it that we're building? And I wanna make sure that it's something that's important to me and something that's important to you. And the sun conjunct Uranus is really kind of highlighting all of that and disrupting it. It's like pulling that grenade pin and throwing it in and watching it blow up and then, okay, did it stand the test of time? 
Is it going to stand the test of time? There's a certain level of flexibility that needs to ha be had here and it almost seems like if people cannot be flexible, they're so rigid, they're so set in their ways that they're going to push down, they're going to push you, they're going to try to force you and the answer is for some of you, like you can't force me, like the I can't, I'm going to leave, I'm you are going to have to wait or I'm going to leave. You know, it's it's very cut. It's very like black or white almost. And that's the energy that we're working with, which can be really triggering. It could be really, you know, there could be some major splits that happen here and there could be some major revelations. It's very much, you know, who knows what side of the coin you're gonna get because Uranus again is very unpredictable. For those of you guys who have these, um, you know, lifestyles that have been built and set and in, put into place, those things are going to start getting questioned. I don't really see a lot of people talking about that on the internet right now as in the astrology world, but I'm telling you that this is what is going to happen. There are some areas of your life that have been cemented and set in firm, you know, concrete that you thought would last. and. The universe sees something totally different. I see this when it comes to your money. I see this when it comes to your spending, what is important to you, what is valuable to you, and like what it is that you are exerting, like putting your energy and effort into building that you thought would suffice, that you thought that would be plentiful. The universe sees more than you do, and that's why you need to remain really, really flexible. Also, there's a lot of personal power issues that are getting triggered this week. I have been feeling this like a lot. I've been feeling a 6,000% where I've been kind of revisiting some inner child work that I thought I had healed and it's you know presenting itself now and I'm glad to see it but I'm like okay I have to roll my sleeves up and I have to make the time because this is important, this is valuable, this is why this can't happen, this can't happen, this can't happen. Don't tell me what to do because I'm working on this right now. Like you don't know what's going on. Just because you have a time constraint doesn't mean that I fall under your time constraint. I have my schedule, I have my routine. Your needs, your priorities are not my own. So if I'm working on this and you're working on that, you have to wait until I'm done working on this and then I will come to you. Do you see what I'm getting? So it's like literally we have to remain flexible. The other thing is that meditation. I was doing a reading for someone last week or maybe I was doing a group reading. I can't remember. But the word meditation came through and I did not see meditation as something that was constructive. I actually saw it as something that was destructive. I saw it as people kind of icing over the problems by pretending that they were namasteing, that they were in a state of, in a state of peace. or maybe that they're not pretending but they have this expectation that there's going to be this sense of peace all the time always no matter what the circumstances and at the end of the day you're a human being you're a human being you're having a human being ex experience and you can't expect there to be perfect nirvana or perfect bliss because that's not realistic there are different polarities there are different energies that's why i didn't fit into buddhism for too long when it was that i was studying when i was studying it because as a human being i realized and as a spiritual as a spiritual being as a spiritual worker there are two sides of the coin there's this extreme there's that extreme and then there's the middle ground we can't stay in the middle ground forever because we're human and we're not perfect so we can't expect perfection there's this this working that needs to happen i do not See, I, I really feel like the internet, and I've already started seeing it, where people are like, just take a deep breath, take a pause, you know, meditate, namaste. Do I see us taking breaks and pauses in order to recollect ourselves, in order to regroup? Yeah, but to stay in that space for too long is not realistic, and you need to channel this energy in a way that is constructive. You need to work with this energy instead of work against it. If you are trying to stay in a space stay of speed, blah, blah, blah. If you are trying to stay in a space of peace and you know keep the balance and keep everything working and together and holding it together and you're put together, you are not going to you're you're working against this because again, if Uranus is coming here pulling that grenade and throwing things apart, that's like you trying to grab all these pieces as they're flying through the air and put them back together. Like, oh no, everything is fine. Everything is not fine. Everything is not okay, <laughs> and that's okay. So I'm wondering where this is happening or where this could be happening in your life. It could be in your work environment where you're just like, look, Betty, quit sending me all these mass emails. We are working on it. I said that to you in my first, second, and third email. Nothing has changed. It could be in your relationships where it's just like, look, this is who I am. 
this is who I am or this is what I want or this is how it's been but is this going to work? The reality is is maybe it will, maybe it won't but we need to discuss. The one thing that I will say, there's Venus moving through the sign of Aries, Mercury moving through the sign of Aries, Sun moving through stubborn Taurus, Uranus just entered into the sign of Taurus. There is a lot of energy. Then we have Mars being restless in the sign of Gemini. So <clears throat> what we are seeing <clears throat> is a lot of restless, a lot of power, a lot of drive, a lot of ambition, a lot of force, a lot of will. And the other thing is, is that Pluto is going to go, is going to turn retrograde on Thursday, I believe, on the 24th. If you are trying to work against this, if you are trying to suppress it, you are going to get trampled by it. That is the reality. That is the reality of it. You cannot stay, again, the internet can come for me. I literally don't care. You guys know that I do not reiterate what everyone else is saying. I tell you what I see and what I feel, and this is what I see and what I feel. I'm not projecting. This is what I'm seeing within the chart. You cannot stay in a state of peace. I mean, you can, but like why it's like being again in a stampede sometimes and all of the bulls are running this way and you're like i'm just gonna pretend like this isn't happening it is happening get up and you know move in a space that is safe move in a space that is constructive and move in a space where you are able to enjoy it versus getting trampled by it if you pretend like you're meditating or not pretend i don't want to use that word but if you have this expectation of i'm gonna stay in a space of perpetual bliss and peace and you know it's put everything together and hold everything together, again, you're gonna get trampled. Now, if there is, if meditation is working for you, don't get me wrong, if meditation is working for you and it gives you peace and calms you and centers you before you start your day, and that's what I use, that's, to me, that is healthy, that is constructive. So that is a way to use meditation for good, but don't enter into a space where you are, you know, coasting over things and putting frosting over an issue when in the reality is you need to deal with it, you need to address it, you need to see it, you need to look at it, you need to have a conversation about it. It's not easy, but it needs to happen. There's a lot of energy that is forcing its will this week. Pluto is turning retrograde. This is a major, major moment for us astrologically for this year. Pluto is turning retrograde on the 24th, but we are already feeling this now. Why? Because it's already started kind of going into the space of like what is going on. Its energy is, is like still, it's stagnant. So when that happens, all of this stuff, all of this muck starts to rise up to the surface because it's in this still space. When Pluto was moving direct, it was transforming, 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 knocking down this barrier, knocking down this obstacle, pushing through this path, showing you this lesson, deal with this, look at this, learn. It's like, it's like um, again, bird box, where it's like, open your eyes, look at it. You know, this is, these are some things that you've been hiding. This is the shadow side of yourself that you have not been wanting to see. You don't want to address it. You need to look at it, right? That's when Pluto is moving forward, and it's just like, I'm clearing this out, I'm clearing this out, I'm clearing this out, throw this bag out push this bag out, I'm gonna be you know, different. I'm gonna make all these changes and transformations, right? Well, what happens is that when Pluto goes retrograde, there's this moment right before he's fully retrograde where everything is quiet and still. It's like we lose gravity and we're just like kind of like floating and figuring things out. But we know something is going to happen, we can feel it. We energetically feel it, we can feel it in our spirits and we're just like, okay. Like there's this like, okay, <laughs> five. And then when Pluto goes retrograde, all of that garbage that you were tossing out from the past, some of it is going to come back. I know, I know some of you guys are gonna be like, what, 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 what? But honestly, this is a good thing. Some of the baggage that, it is that you thought that you got rid of and some of the things that you thought you had left in the past, it's gonna come back up, it's gonna rear its head again and you are going to have to address it one more time. And this is not a bad thing. Actually, I'm looking at the angel therapy cards and I think we need to pull a card. I will for this for the for you guys, I feel like we need to we need to do a pick a card reading for the Pluto retrograde. I had already asked you guys about that on my Instagram. Yeah, see, we're already starting to see this stuff. Mm-hmm. Give me a minute. Yo! You guys look. Heart chakra, past life issue. I'm not making this stuff up. One more, just one more card. This re this video is gonna be a little different than how I would normally do it. Oh, new love, how sweet and precious. Oh my gosh, you guys, I, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but I've been pulling the retreat card left and right, 
and the miracles card. There's some issues that are going to get drudged back up that you thought that you had left behind, that you had said goodbye to, but they are going to come back up. And this is not a negative thing. I have already planned my schedule. Keep some time out for yourself. If you wanna work with this energy, make time for yourself that, <clears throat> that you already have set in motion for, okay, this is my quiet time. This is my me time. And you're going to need that because some of you guys are going to have these old issues kind of re-emerging and showing themselves up, this past life issue. Things that are connected to your heart, things that are connected to the root chakra. Some of you guys are going to need to take a pause, take a breather, and to go into your sacred space. You're going to need to feel safe and you can't feel that way if you are pretending like what is blasting in your face doesn't exist because everything within your spirit is telling you that there is an issue, probably a past life issue. The other thing is is that with Pluto retrograde, Pluto has a way of bringing things back from the soul or Pluto has, well, always connects with the soul, soul purpose, and these really strong soul ties to people and things and places and situations and work, etc. But when it's retrograde, it's saying, okay, look, Jess, or look, Diane, or look, Tasha, you made all of these steps, all of these, implemented all of these changes, <clears throat> and we appreciate that, but we also want you to see this, we want you to revalue this, we want you to this thing you thought that you were gonna throw it away, maybe there's some value there. Or maybe these past issues, now that you've cleansed this out, these are some areas that you need to address or these are some areas that are impacting you now that there's this void there. So I really wanna see you guys working, you know, creating a space for your, your, your inner child, your, a space for healing. And you can share that with another person because I do see a connection to other people. I do see a connection to soulmate love. I do see a connection to love in all forms. Some of you guys are doing exactly what I was doing when I started my journey in healing my heart. My heart chakra was I was setting intention for relationships that would teach me the most about myself in a small in a small amount of time. For for example, the, the period that it was that we were dating. So it'd be like a year, a year and a half. So what I'm seeing for you guys is maybe some of you guys are doing that where you're seeing the lessons within this current relationship. You're learning as much as you can from it. You're growing as much as you can from it. And then when that relationship is done, probably after Pluto goes, well, right around when Pluto goes direct, then you say goodbye to it. You, you know, and you open up for new love, you open up for miracles, but that's what it is I'm seeing is this energy of be open to the miracle, be open to the change because there's a lot of that going on this week. I, again, like I said, I'm seeing the retreat card, so I just feel like you guys need to make time out to retreat, make time out to be with the people that really you care about, or be by yourself. This video is getting really long and wordy, I'm sorry, but some people, oh, it's 11 11, but some people need to separate away from their families, uh, they're, they really do care about them or maybe they really care about their friends or whatever but you need to take some time out for yourself again this is you knowing your power this is you owning your power stepping into your your energy knowing what is right for you and knowing what is right for others and I don't want to say calling the shots but checking in with them and being like okay look where are you at where are you at this conversation that we're gonna have is not the easiest but we need to have it so that's what I'm seeing this week let me see if I'm missing anything I feel like I pretty much covered my bases right okay so the 27th the 27th I don't want anybody to think that this is all doom and gloom this is actually all here for your for your greater healing if you didn't have this you would just be like <laughs> up the creek without a paddle you know what I mean but Mars, Mars ruling our drive, our ambition, and our action is very erratic and kind of like frazzled as it's moving through the sign of Gemini. But what's going to happen is that it's going to come into a tense alignment with Neptune. And what happens with this is that this is that moment on the 27th where you can really feel beat up. This is that moment where if there's a weakness, this is when it shows. <laughs> this is when you're just like, I can't, like I'm defeated, I, I can't. This is when that person who has all this energy, this is sometimes when they just drop. And it's not just the Mars square Neptune aspect, it, the, the drive of Mercury moving through Aries, it's the drive, the heart of Venus moving through the sign of Aries, it's Sun moving through Taurus, it's Uranus moving through Taurus, it's Pluto preparing to go, 
Pluto and then being retrograde, Saturn preparing to go retrograde, which is gonna be next week, and it just is kind of like a collapse. Now this could be a mental collapse, this could be a, a I need to sit down. Like, okay, woo, like, wow. You know, we did the most, just go on without me, I need this time. And this is probably where, again, there's this energy of retreat. There's this energy of new love. And I know that sounds crazy because it sounds negative, all that I'm saying, but you guys know there's no such thing as a negative. It's not a bad thing. It's probably where your barrier falls down. It's probably where your wall falls down, where you feel very vulnerable and you feel very exposed. And that's exactly how it should be. Instead of you walking with your wall up all the time, at some point it's gotta fall down, it's gotta go down. And this is for the sake of your heart chakra in order to heal these past life issues Maybe it's past life, maybe it's present life from your childhood, but it's here now. When you have that moment where you kind of break down or you allow yourself to kind of retreat, I don't see this as you cocooning yourself unless you need that, but when you have that moment of retreat, meaning like, okay, I have to pull back or this, what I was expecting or what I was hoping, it's not manifesting, it's not doing what it was that I was hoping that it would do, that's the moment when you experience the miracle. And I think and not even what I think, what I'm feeling is throughout this entire Pluto retrograde phase and Saturn retrograde phase, which is going to be until October and September. So up until that point, if you allow yourself to be so open to what is happening here, you will experience incredible miracles of healing, of growth, of connection, of love, of passion, of purpose. That is what I feel, but that's why I'm like, this is not um, this is not a bad thing at all. Um, there are a few extra cards that I pulled. There's the spread your seeds card. See if you can get that. When the wind takes you, when the wind is pushing you somewhere, if you are, allow yourself to go with that, if you allow yourself to flow with that, you can spread your seeds and watch them grow. You'd be surprised where the universe will take you if you lift your feet up. The other thing that I'm seeing is the gardenia, emotional protection. And this is that card of not walling yourself up, but making sure that you are you have balance, which is the next card, relationship balance making sure that you are open, but you are not exposed. Do you know what I mean? Like your heart is open to what can happen. Your heart is open to working with the divine, with working with others, but you're not investing all of your eggs in this. You're not putting all this pressure on, okay, this has to happen, or if it doesn't, I'm gonna be destroyed by this. And if you are destroyed, let it be for your rebuilding up. Let it be for your rebirth. Let it be for this re-emergence. We'll talk more about Pluto retrograde in another video, so make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. Make sure that you turn your notifications on, that way you're notified as soon as it comes on, if you feel called to. I'm not trying to pressure anybody. And for those of you guys that would like to see a pick a card reading, a full reading, and that's the thing too, I wanna do a full Celtic cross for all of us because Pluto retrograde is huge, as is Saturn retrograde. And there's, we just need to talk about it. And I think that you guys are going through a lot and I feel like you do deserve a reading. You know, at this point, I'm pretty much closed off to doing personal readings right now for my own safe, my own sake and my own well-being. And I feel like you guys do deserve that. I feel like you guys do need it. And the last card that, is that I pulled is Prairie. Prairie, move and adapt. Again, that's not you locking in. Sometimes sun moving through the sign of Taurus wants to lock in, it's very stubborn. You don't need to be stubborn. If you are going to be stubborn, it's you protecting the things that, it is that you really care about, that you value, and holding on to them like a little gem, and that's that emotional protection. But as far as you know, your path, I think that you should stay open to what the universe is trying to show you and teach you. And when it comes to your healing, there's a lot, a lot of healing that's going to be occurring within the next, within the next few months. And a serious miracle can occur if you're open to it. And if not, you might get trampled. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so I hope that that didn't scare anybody. But you guys know I don't like to tell you like, oh, this is so you know, pretty and fluffy, like sometimes the neg the stuff that is heavy or challenging is the best thing that could ever happen to you. And take that from someone who has more squares in her chart than trines and sextiles. A square is again, opposition and this energy, well not an opposition, but the energy having a hard time working together. It makes you more um, ambitious. It makes you relentless. It makes you power, like it makes you powerful. It makes you hungry it means that you are going to do all that you can in order to get you know, whatever it is that you love coasting to, to whether it be relationships, career, whatever. So if there's squares and if there's challenges going on around us, 
use this to your better your betterment use this for your good use this for your growth versus you know fall over and be like i can't like fine you can't you're gonna get trampled stampede all right so i hope that, that makes sense you guys um if you have any questions literally i'm available put them down in the comments below i feel like there's going to be a lot of questions that are going to come through i understand it 1000 percent, especially because i'm not doing a astro chat tonight because i'm finishing on finishing this book and tweaking it and making sure that it's right and perfect for them <clears throat> send me good vibes and i'll see you guys in my next video <laughs> bye